Hey, what's up? Josh here with another exciting Photoshop tutorial. Today, I'm explaining and demonstrating every tool in the toolbar for 2023. If you don't already have Photoshop or you'd like to try other Adobe Creative tools, there's a link in the description below for a free trial. There's also links to all of the example images I'm using today. So with that, let's get into it. First, let's reset our workspace so we're all looking at the same thing. So go up to Window, Workspace, Essentials, and then Window, Workspace, Reset Essentials. Now, so we can see things a little bit better, I'm going to click my Layers panel and drag it over to the side here, open that up a little bit, and then collapse all of these tools. Now there are three shortcuts that I'll be using quite frequently today. One is zoom by holding the Alt or Option key and using my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. The second is to hold the spacebar to click and drag the canvas around. And the third is simply undo, which is Command or Control Z. All right, so our first tool is the Move tool. So with that selected, if we go over to our layers here and I unlock this layer, I can click and drag that around. Now, if you look at the tools in the layers panel, you'll see that little arrow in the bottom right corner. That means that there are multiple tools collapsed underneath that tool. So to access those, we just have to click and hold until they pop up. So I'm gonna go to my artboard tool next, and I'm going to click and drag all the way across my image, and that just created Artboard 1. And you can see all these little circles with a plus sign in them. Go ahead and click one of those, and that'll create Artboard 2, Artboard 3, Artboard 4, and so on. So this is primarily so that you can save multiple design comps within one Photoshop file. And it was brought over from Illustrator. Super handy thing to have for designers. I'm gonna undo all of that. Next, we're going to go to our first selection tool here, Rectangular Marquee Tool. I'm gonna zoom in here, click and drag over this subject. And if we right click, we can go to Layer Via Copy or Layer Via Cut. Now, if we copy it, it's going to copy it to a new layer. If we cut it, it's going to cut it out of our original image and put it onto a new layer, for instance. If I click that and I turn off my original image, we're left with just our selection. And if I do the opposite, if I turn off our new layer, now it's been completely cut out of our original. So if you wanted to do that, but leave your original image intact, you can do layer via copy. And there you have it. Next up, we have the elliptical marquee tool, which, same thing, creates a selection, but it is an oval or a circle. If you want a perfect circle, you can actually hold shift as you click and drag out. And that'll make a perfect circle. Or you can actually click in the middle of whatever it is you're trying to select, hold Alt and Shift at the same time, and it will create a centered selection. And to deselect, you can hit Command or Control D. All right, next up, we have our single row marquee tool. I'm going to just click anywhere, and you can see that it's selected literally a single row of pixels. And if I go to my single column selection tool and just click anywhere, you can see it's selected a single row of pixels vertically. Command or Control D to deselect that. Next, let's go to our lasso tool. And the lasso tool is a selection tool that you can freehand. It's totally freehand. So I'm just going to work my way around the subject here. And there's my selection. And right after you've made a selection like this, uh, you can move that selection around. You're not stuck with the selection right in that spot. I'm going to undo that selection. Let's go to our next tool, the Polygonal Lasso tool. 
So this one is also kind of freehand, except it draws straight lines. So if you click, move your mouse, click, move your mouse, click, it'll create straight lines for you. So it's useful if you're making a selection of something that's a little more geometrical, let's say. Undo that. Next, we have the Magnetic Lasso tool. So let's zoom in on this hat here. So the Magnetic Lasso tool is going to look at color and contrast, and it's going to attempt to snap that selection to whatever object you're trying to work around. So we lose a little bit of contrast right there at the bottom. Otherwise, not too bad. Now, if you do make a mistake, like I did here, you can hit Backspace, and it'll undo that last little keyframe that it made. And then to complete your selection, you just come back to your original point and click. Okay, let's undo that. Next, we have the Object Selection tool. Now you can see it's working up here. It's actually going through the image and trying to identify different planes, different objects in this image. So you can see it's identified this cabin as an object. It's identified my person here as an object, the hat as an object. So it can be a really useful tool, depending on how complicated your photo is, to make a quick selection of something. So you can see I just clicked on the hat and it made a selection. Or I can just click on this shirt and it makes a selection there as well. Now what if I want to select this shirt and this hat at the same time? You can hold Shift after you've made your first selection and then click on your second selection. Let's undo that. And let's go to our quick selection tool. And this one, we're just going to paint over the hat. And you can see it's made a pretty, as the name implies, quick selection of that hat. Let's see if I can select the rest of my person here. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Let's deselect that. And you'll note that pretty much all of these tools have settings that you can play with up here. We're not going to go into those today because we just want to get through the basics of each tool. But be sure to subscribe because I am going to break down a lot of these tools in the future. All right, next we're going to go to our Magic Wand tool. And the Magic Wand tool works best with things like solid colors or very defined shapes. For instance, if we zoom in to our person again and try to select this hat, you can see that it's primarily selecting a particular color of that hat. So it's not going to be the best tool for everything. All right, let's deselect that. Next, we have our crop tool. Up here at the top, you can see we have different presets. You can create a ratio. So let's say we want a 5 by 10 ratio. It'll create that for us. Or width, height, and resolution. We could do 8.5 inches by 11 inches and 300 pixels per inch. And it'll create that for us. Or there are other presets, do 16 by 9, or there's already a preset for 8.5 by 11 at 300 ppi. And if you have a keyboard with a number pad, you can hit enter on the number pad, crop that, or if we undo that, you can hit this check mark up here at the top. Next up, we have the perspective crop tool. So let's zoom into this roof. And say that we want to use this roof as a texture or an element in another design or composition, but we want to change the perspective of it so it's a rectangular kind of flat surface. We can click on the corners 
of our roof. And hit OK. And check this out. Pretty cool. Let's undo that. You can also click and drag with this tool and then move the corners around to match whatever it is you're trying to match the perspective of. Okay, let's go to our next tool, the slice tool and the slice selection tool. So I can click and drag over a section of my image and do that repeatedly and it'll make these things called slices. Now this is primarily for web use and essentially what's going to happen is when I export this it's going to come out into individual images and then you can use HTML or CSS to reassemble it in your web browser. Next you have the slice selection tool. So let's say we have the slice tool and we make a bunch of little itty bitty slices here. Now we can go in with our slice selection tool and we can select and move each one of these and it's going to reconfigure all the other slices that it's maybe running into and we can also scale them up and down. All right, let's undo all that. All right, next up, let's go to our frame tool and let's move to a different image. And the frame tool is gonna allow us to create a frame, either rectangular or round, that we can easily swap images in and out of. Again, this tool is gonna have a lot more settings than what we'll go into today. But just for a basic demonstration, let's create a circle right over our coffee cup here. And I'll adjust it, use my arrow keys to kind of get it into position. And then I'm going to go over to Properties, and I'm going to go to Insert Image, Place from Local Disk. And I want to put a portrait in that circle. And now I can click and drag that image around in that frame. And let's collapse that. If I right click on this and go to say replace contents, I can select a different image and reposition it as I like. Now there are a lot of different ways you can use frames. You can convert custom shapes into frames even. Most of the time I'm actually gonna use a clipping mask for things like this, but that's another video. You can also use frames to manage photos in say a spread. All right, let's undo that. Let's switch to another image and let's go to our eyedropper tool. Now with our eyedropper tool, we can just click right on top of this red color and you can see that it's changed our foreground color and I can now use that color for say my paintbrush tool. Now say you have a pattern that you want to sample a color from maybe the color varies slightly so you'd want to go up here to sample size and change it to say 51 by 51 average so that you get a more accurate representation of that color. All right next we're actually going to look at the color sampler tool next 3D tools we are not going to get into. There are only a few in the toolbar, and we are not going to be covering anything 3D today. So let's select our color sampler tool. So let's say I want to sample this kind of greenish yellow here, this red, and this purple. And as you're doing this, you'll see this dialog box pop up here. And you can see that it's giving me RGB values for each of these. And if you click on this little down arrow, you can actually change it from RGB to web, HSB, CMYK, etc. You can change it to 16 and 32 bit. So this is a very useful tool if you're trying to create a color palette for a design and you want to base it off of something like this image. So let's undo all that. Let's go back to our coffee cup here. And we're going to go to our next tool, the ruler tool. 
And let's say I want to measure the distance between two objects in a design. I'm going to click and drag, and we can see that the distance between the two objects is 1234.46 pixels. But what if we don't want to measure pixels? Maybe we want to add a design element and have it exactly at the same angle as another object. So I'm going to click and drag on this edge right here on our phone and you can see that it's negative 62.3 degrees. All right, what else can we do with this? So let's go to another example. Let's go to this beach scene here. I'm going to unlock this layer, hit Command or Control T, and rotate it ever so slightly. Hit OK. And now I'm going to click and drag, just like I did before, and I'm gonna match the horizon line. And then up here at the top, I'm going to hit Straighten Layer. And we've just fixed our horizon line. And of course, we can crop that to fix those edges there. We can do Content Aware Fill. We can just Command or Control T to transform and scale it up slightly. And there you have it. All right, let's go back to our coffee cup example. And let's say that I want to leave a note for the designer on this. So let's go to our note tool. And let's say I want them to change the title that's on this phone here. I'm going to just click right on top of that. You'll see a notes panel pop out here. And then up here at the top, I can put the author and change the color if I want to. Say I want to make this bright red. And then I can just delete that if I want to. All right, so our next tool is the count tool. And let's go to another example for this. And let's count some sheep. I know, a little bit cheesy. Let's actually go up here and we're going to change our marker size to 10 and our label size to 15, just so it's a little easier to see. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You're just clicking in whatever order you click on the objects you're counting, that's the order it's gonna put them in. So now I know I have eight sheep. Maybe these are design elements that I'm counting and I wanna put them in a certain order. But there you have it, there's the counting tool. I'm gonna to clear that. Next up we have the spot healing brush tool. My brush is a little bit small. I'm gonna use my left and right bracket key to adjust the size of that brush. And up here in my brush settings, you can see you can change the brush size and the brush hardness. For this, I'm going to put the hardness at 50%. That's going to give my brush a little bit of a soft edge, so it blends a little bit better. And with this tool, I can just click and drag right on top of an object, and it's going to try to remove that as best it can based on what's around it. We're using content aware fill, very powerful. So if I click and drag over this guy over here, again, actually looks a little bit smudgy, but overall not a bad job. You can always make your brush a little bit smaller and do a little bit more of a refined selection there. That's a lot better. I'm gonna undo both of those. Next up, the Healing Brush tool, which is similar, but this time we're going to hold Alt-Option and click on an area to sample it. And then we can use that sample to paint over our object. So you can see that it's pretty much exactly copied this area over here. So it's not as powerful as Content-Aware, but in certain situations it is going to be a valuable tool. Let's undo that. Next up, we have the patch tool. So the patch tool, I'm actually going to click and drag. This is a freehand tool. And you can see up here, I have source selected. You'll see what that does in a second. So I'm gonna click and drag that selection over, and it's going to replace my selection with my new selection. And it's going to try to blend it as best it can. Commander Control D, 
and you can see that got rid of my sheep for me. I'm going to undo that, and let's go up here and hit destination and do the exact same thing. And now it's creating a patch of my selection, and it'll blend it for me. Pretty cool. I apparently just cloned a sheep. All right, let's undo that. Next up, we have the Content Aware Move Tool. Now, instead of kind of copying an object and moving it to a new spot, this is literally going to allow you to put it somewhere else and then intelligently fill in that spot where it was. So again, this is like a freehand selection tool. And now I'm going to click and drag it over here and watch what happens when I hit OK. And Commander Control D to deselect. Now it hasn't done a perfect job. You can see that it hasn't blended this selection very well, but the spot where it was doesn't look too bad. So again, varying situations, it is going to work better than others. You can play with different adjustments up at the top here, but that is basically what that does. I'm gonna undo that. Next up, we got the red eye tool. So let's go and switch to a portrait here. So that's exactly what it sounds like. You got red eye from a flash. We're just gonna click right on those pupils where the red eye is, and it's going to do its best to get rid of that red. And if the default settings don't look quite right, you can make adjustments up top. Let's zoom out and we'll take a look at the brush tool. So the brush tool, you have lots of settings up here. You have lots of built-in brushes you can play with. You have additional brush settings here. Shape dynamics, scattering texture, the list goes on. There is so much you can do with brushes, it's incredible. But for the very, very basics, you're gonna click on here, you have your hardness. So if you have your hardness at zero, it's going to be a super soft brush. And I'm gonna hit D to reset my foreground and background colors and paint with some black here. I'm going to use my bracket keys to make my brush bigger, and I'm just going to click once, and you can see that that is a super soft brush. And then if I change this, put it up to 100, and click, you can see it's nice, sharp edges. And if you do have a tablet that's pressure sensitive, you can adjust your flow and your pressure and all of that wonderful stuff for painting. Otherwise, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a paintbrush. Let's undo those. Next up, we got the pencil tool. Now, the pencil tool is kind of a weird one, pretty much like a hard paintbrush. Um, you can adjust the hardness. It's not going to make any difference. It's just going to be like uh, drawing with a pencil. You can, of course, adjust the size, but it's just like a hard-edged brush. Next up, we have the color replacement tool. This one's pretty cool. Let's uh, select a color here. Let's go with kind of a lime green. Hit OK. Up my brush a little bit here. And it is actively sampling the color that's underneath the brush, and it's replacing it with the color I've selected but I could absolutely change the color of this red suit jacket with this brush. You get the idea. Next we have the mixer brush tool. This is a great tool for digital painters. This is actually going to mix colors in the image as you're painting. And let's actually change our color to something slightly less offensive. Let's actually do blue so you can see the contrast. And I'm going to up the size of my brush a little bit. You can see you have how wet you want your brush, the load, the mix, the flow, etc., etc. So if I zoom in here and I start painting, you can see that tinge of blue in there. And I'm actively mixing the red of her hat with the blue that I've selected. So this is a great tool for digital painting if you wanted to stylize an image and make it look more like a painting, you could definitely use this. All right, I'm going to undo that. All right, let's go back to our sheep. 
and we're gonna go to our clone stamp tool. Now the clone tool allows you to sample an area of an image and then paint it onto another part of the image. So for instance, I'll alt click right on this little guy right here, move my mouse down a little bit, and then paint, and there he is. This is a great tool to use if you need to just copy minor details or patterns, or you can reduce the flow and touch up skin. There's so many things you can do with the clone stamp tool. If I toggle the adjustments panel for the clone source tool, you can see there are a lot of options here. So this is a very powerful tool that you definitely should learn. All right, next up, we have the pattern stamp tool. Now let's go back to, let's go to our red eye. Let's say that I want to add a pattern to this hat and I just wanna paint it in. So first I want to select that hat. So let's actually go back to one of our selection tools, our object selection tool, and I just wanna select that hat. And then let's create a new layer. Let's go back to our pattern clone tool. I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna paint that pattern right on there. And by default, my pattern appears to be leaves. We've got some trees, grass, water preloaded. I'm going to deselect. And uh, that looks, uh, yeah, sure, interesting. Something else we can do is we can go up to our blending modes. Yeah, let's do screen. So now she's got this hat with some funky leaf patterns on it. Anyway, just one example of many things you can do with that tool. I'm gonna delete that. All right, next let's go to our history brush tool. And let's go back to our sheep photo. And let's actually grab our spot healing brush tool. And I'm gonna get rid of two of these sheep. And now with our history brush tool selected, let's say I want to bring this sheep back, but not this one. So I'm basically going to undo what I just did, but do it in a very selective manner using a brush. So I'm just gonna click and drag over the area and he's back. And I've left this area totally undisturbed. Let's undo all that. Next we have the art history brush tool. But first I'm going to erase this sheep again. All right, now let's go to that art history brush tool. And if you go up here at the top, you can see there are different styles. Um, I'm going to stick with dab, because that'll be a little more obvious what's happening. And as the name implies, it is a history brush tool, so it is going to reveal that sheep right there where it was. So you can see that brown smudge. But because it's a dab style, it is pressure sensitive, and it is going to create an artistic rendering of whatever I paint over. So if I change this to say, tight long, it's gonna do some funky stuff. Or loose curl. So you can do some real weird artistic renderings with this brush. I'm gonna undo all of that. Next up we have the eraser tool, which is exactly what it sounds like. And you notice that when I erased, it actually looked like it painted white. That's because my background color is white on my palette here. And this is a locked background layer. So if I undo that, and I unlock my background layer, and I click, now you can see it's transparent. Just a good thing to note. Now our next tool is the background eraser tool. Let's go to our portrait here. 
And wherever the center of that brush is, is what it's going to sample as the background. So if I click and just work around here, you can see that it is pretty accurately sampling and removing or erasing that background. Again, great tool, a lot you can do with it. Let's undo all of that. Magic eraser tool. So this tool is going to sample colors and kind of figure out where edges are and delete everything in between. So for instance, if I select the glasses here, it's going to look at those colors in a certain range and try to delete them. There is tolerance up here that you can play with. So the less tolerance, it's going to be a little more picky. But if we put the tolerance up at say 50, it's going to pull a lot more out. All right, next up we have the gradient tool. Let's go back to our cabin. Now let's say you have a photo and it's a little bit bright up here at the top in the sky. You wanna reduce the brightness there, but you want to maintain the brightness at the bottom of the photo. Now there are a lot of ways you can accomplish this. One way I'll demonstrate with the gradient tool. First, I'll hit D on the keyboard to reset my foreground and background colors. Then I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to make sure I have a linear gradient selected. I'm going to click and drag from the top to the bottom of the image. And then I'm going to go to my blend modes and I'm going to select multiply. And then I'm going to grab my fill and reduce my fill until it looks about right. And then if I turn that layer on and off, you can see we've darkened just the sky and we have a nice gradation into the bottom of the image so that this grass isn't getting darker as well. Now, of course, you can use gradients for all kinds of things for design purposes. Of course, you have this gradient, the linear gradient. You have a spot gradient, a radial gradient. You have an angle gradient, which is pretty cool. You have a reflective gradient, a reflected gradient. And then you have a diamond gradient. Go ahead and delete that. Next up, we have the paint bucket tool, which if you zoom in here to an object that has similar color and contrast and click, you can see that it's going to fill that in with whatever color you have selected. So let's undo that. Let's actually go to our underground sign here. And I'm just going to click on that. You can see it's filled it in fairly well. But let's undo that. Let's bring up the tolerance. And you can see that's a lot better. Not always the best way to fill something with color in a precise manner, but you get the idea. Also, if you were to just create a new layer, you could fill that with a color. Or if I go to my foreground color and select, say, red, and click, you can fill the whole layer. We'll undo all of those adjustments. Again, we're skipping all the 3D tools in this tutorial. Next up, we have the blur tool. So let's switch to another portrait. And if we zoom in here, let's say I want to blur the edge of these leaves just a little bit. So you have strength up here. Let's set it all the way up to 100. And I'm just going to start painting. You can see the edge of that leaf blurring there. And maybe I want this whole edge to be a little bit blurred out. So every time you click, it's going to apply some more blur to that area. So that is the blur tool. Next up, we have the sharpen tool. Let's zoom into the eyes here. Yeah, maybe the eye isn't quite as sharp as you'd like. You can just click and paint over that area and click and click. And you can definitely see the difference there. Of course, like any tool, this can be overused, so you're going to get some weird colors and kind of artifacting if you overuse it. 
there you have it. All right, next up we have the smudge tool. And for this, let's go to another portrait. So let's say we want to give this guy some pointy ears for some reason. Some weird like vampire-y kind of orc ears. Of course, if you wanted to do that without adding so much blur to the image, you'd want to go up to filter and liquify. But that is another video. All right, let's undo that. Next up, we have the dodge tool. So for this one, we're gonna switch back to our previous portrait. And up here at the top, you can see range and exposure. So this is an exposure tool. And I'm going to be brightening the eyes. So I want to select range and midtones. And I'm gonna bump the exposure all the way up to 100%. And I'm just gonna paint over this eye and paint over this eye. Give it a couple clicks there. And that really makes the eyes pop. Now, of course, again, easy tool to overuse. So be careful with this one. I'm gonna undo that. Next up, we have the burn tool, which is also an exposure tool. It's just going to darken things. So with my layer selected, I'm gonna hit Command or Control L. And I'm gonna take this brightness slider and just slide it over until Things are getting a little hot on the highlights. Hit OK. And now with my range set to highlights, I'm going to drop my exposure down to 25%. And now I'm just going to start clicking with this tool. And you can see it's bringing down those highlights. And it's just a quick and easy way to, uh, to darken things. Next up, we have the sponge tool. The sponge tool saturates and desaturates. So up here at the top, you have modes saturate and desaturate and flow. I'm gonna turn the flow up to 100% just so we can see exactly what's happening. I'm gonna zoom in here. Let's say that we want to saturate this red lipstick a little bit further. Just paint right on top of that. Much brighter. There's before, there's after. And then if we wanna do the opposite, we just select desaturate and paint over that area again. And it'll just suck the color right out of there. Next up, we have the pen tool. And for this one, I'm gonna go back to my underground sign. We're not gonna go too deep into the pen tool. There's a lot we could talk about with the pen tool, but it's a great way to make shapes and complex selections. So let's say I wanted to select this whole sign. I'm gonna click on a corner here, click on another corner. I'm going to click up here at the top and drag, and you can see it's creating a curve for me. And then I can click down here again at this next corner, and it's going to match the curvature of my last selection. I can hold Alt and adjust just one side of that curve, and then I can continue on. And now with my sign selected, I can either right click and say make selection, hit OK, and now I have a selection. Or I could do something like right click and go to define custom shape. And I'm gonna call this underground sign, hit okay. And now when I go to my custom shapes tool, which we'll talk about in a minute, I will have that shape available to add to any composition. Let's delete that. Now, if you actually skip down a couple tools here, you have the path selection tool and the direct selection tool. So if you select the path selection tool, you can click and drag this entire path around. And with the direct selection tool, you can select and modify individual points just by clicking on them and making adjustments. All right, let's switch back to our landscape. Next up, we have the horizontal type tool and just click and type. You can double click to select a word or triple click to select an entire line. And then I'm gonna go up here to my colors. Actually, I didn't mind that color. Let's stick with that. 
My justification is centered. I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna select my move tool and move that around. And maybe I want this a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna go back to my type tool, hit T on the keyboard, and right here is where my size is. I can either click and select something from here, or I can click right on top of that T and just drag. And if I drag to the left, it'll reduce the size. I'm gonna hit OK. That looks pretty good. Now if I wanted to create vertical type, I could select that type tool, click. I'm gonna select that, make it a little bit smaller, hit OK. Again with my move tool, and move it into place. And if you go up here and toggle the character and paragraph panel, there are a lot more settings you can play with, so definitely take a look at those. I'm gonna delete that and that. Next we have the vertical and horizontal type mask tools. So I'm just gonna select one of these to demonstrate. So I'm gonna click and we'll type the same thing. And I'm gonna make this quite a bit larger. Looks pretty good, I'm gonna hit OK. And you can see instead of applying text, it's actually just made a selection based on that font. So now if I go down here to my add a layer mask button and click that, it's going to cut those letters out of my image. Pretty cool effect, we'll undo that. All right, now you have all your custom shape tools, your rectangle tool, exactly what it sounds like. Now if we zoom in, you see there are these little toggles right here on the corners. If you click and pull those in, it's actually gonna give you a rounded edge, which is a really nice feature. Let's delete that. Next, the ellipse tool. And if you remember from earlier, if you hold shift as you're dragging out, you'll have a perfect circle. Delete that and I'm just hitting the delete key on the keyboard. Your triangle tool, again, you have the opportunity to round those edges just like that. Next, we have the polygon tool. Now this one you can actually modify and add as many sides as you want. So up here at the top, we'll change this to 10 sides and I want to round the edge by, say, 50 pixels. We'll drag that out, and I'll hit Enter on my number pad, and you can see that we have 10 sides with a 50 pixel rounded edge on each corner. Next, we have the Line Tool. Up here at the top, you can adjust your weight or the thickness of your line, so I'm gonna go 50 pixels, Click and drag, and there's your line. Now one thing I haven't mentioned yet is up here where your colors are, you have the option to add a stroke. So the stroke is what goes around the outside of your object. So if I click on that, let's add this bright green color, or you can click on your color picker and select a color. Let's just go with white and you can select the thickness of that stroke. Make a nice fine stroke there. So there are a lot more options you can play with, but we will get into those in another video. All right, let's delete that. And lastly, we have our custom shape tool. The custom shape tool is where you'll be able to load shapes that you got online, or you'll see the shapes that you created yourself. So here's a shape, an arrow that I created, and I can just hop in and grab that in my custom shapes anytime I need it, and I don't have to recreate it or go online and search for an image of it or cut it out of another image or whatever. And you can see that it actually has points on it that I can adjust with my pen tool if I want to. Let's delete that. All right, next up we have the hand tool. Now the hand tool, the shortcut we were using for that is holding the space bar and clicking and dragging. 
So you don't necessarily need to go down here and actually select the hand tool. Next up you have the rotate view tool, which is super handy if you're painting because you can actually just rotate the canvas around, zoom in, maybe you just like the orientation of that better when you're painting, and you come in with a paintbrush and just work on that edge, for example. Let's undo that. And then of course we can reset the view and you're back to where you started. All right, next we have the magnifying glass tool. If you just click, you can zoom in to any point. And if you hold Alt, it will zoom out when you click. Of course you have some options up here. You can fill the screen, you can fit to screen, you can view it at 100% resolution, etc. Next up we have this little menu here edit toolbar, and you'll be able to customize how your toolbar looks. So maybe there's a dozen tools that you use at a given time and you don't wanna to have to look at the other ones. You can just get rid of them, take them off the toolbar, and save it as a preset. I'm gonna cancel that. Next up, you have your foreground and background colors. If you wanna reset them, you can hit D on the keyboard or this little swatch right here. And if you want to flip those colors, you just hit this button here. Underneath of that, you have your quick mask mode. So if I click that and we zoom in here and let's select a brush with a nice hard edge. And I'm just going to paint over this hat. And if you mess up a little bit, you can actually flip your foreground and background colors and with white as your foreground color, you can just paint that back out a little bit. I'm not gonna be super precise here for this example, but you'll get the idea here in a second. All right, now I'm gonna hit that button again. You can also hit Q on your keyboard so it's made a selection of whatever we've painted. So if, say, we make a duplicate of this layer, you can also hit Command or Control J, and we'll hit the Add a Mask button. And now we have a duplicate hat that's been masked that's just floating around out there. And the beauty of a mask is that you can go in and actually adjust that mask and fine tune it. Maybe those edges aren't quite right, but that is that tool. Quick, easy way to make a mask. So let's delete that, zoom out here a little bit. And lastly, we have our different screen viewing modes. So right now we're in our standard screen mode. There's a full screen mode with menu bar. So we click that. It gives us a little more room to work around the canvas. Or we can hit F on the keyboard again, which is the shortcut for all of these, and it'll give us full screen mode. And this is especially great if you're painting, no distractions, all you see is your image. You see we do have rulers up right now. If you want to get rid of those, just hit Command or Control R, and those will disappear. And hit F to return to the standard view. So if you want to learn more, there are two videos I'll recommend, my crash course and the biggest mistakes beginners make in Photoshop. Of course, I have new videos coming out all the time, so be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.